welcome to the special edition of the Military Wire Vision 2020 speaker series. Excited to have you guys here. This is the series where we interview some of America's most elite men and women who have served this country. We share their stories of overcoming in hopes that you, our listener and viewer, can gain something from their story that you can apply to your own life and work to live on purpose. So today's episode, guys, I'm super excited about this, is sponsored by Bone Frog Sellers. Let me say that again, Bone Frog Sellers. It was founded by my friend, Navy SEAL, uh, retired Navy SEAL, Tim Cruikshank. Uh, and with each purchase of that wine, uh, a portion of it goes to the SEAL Legacy Foundation to go ahead and help the families of fallen seals. So uh, be sure you guys check those out. Bone Frog Cellars, that wine is amazing. I've sampled it. It comes out here very, very shortly. It's rated about a 92 on the point scale. But uh, a big uh, shout out to Bravo Zulu to uh, Bone Frog Cellars and their team. So let's talk about leading in difficult times. I think it's fairly certain for me to say that these times are unique. They're different. They're difficult. Um, I think people are having a hard time, you know, visualizing how do I leave myself even out of bed, let alone leave my team. And uh, how do we break this cycle of depression? And how do we lead through it? So to help us unpack this is retired Master Chief Petty Officer of the United States Navy, Rick West, mm -hmm. one of the authors of the book, Breaching the Summit. Master Chief, excited to have you on the show. Welcome to the show. Hey, thank you very much, Mike. It's great to be here. And, and let me tell you, I, uh, I'm honored, one, and, and it's always good to hear people say Bravo Zulu and other things. It puts me at ease of mind. I'm not going to freeze up on you, I don't think. <laughs> good. I doubt you'll freeze up. I mean, you've, you've got moxie and metal. Uh, I think you've proven your stripes, sir. So, um, you know, I, I love hearing stories from, you know, fellow shipmates, fellow service members that have served this country that have accomplished great things. And we've had many of them on this show. Um, but there's a rare error for those who, who, who excel beyond just the standard ranks. I mean, you know, Master Chief Petty Officer of the Navy is no s small achievement. Um, but getting there, what was your motivation? Because I think some people who are looking today, like, should I join the military? What was your motivation for even joining the military to start with? Well, I would say, you know, it wasn't a family history, uh, which is a surprise. And a lot, of, a lot of folks will say that. My biggest motivation was I had a cousin that was served on the Kitty Hawk during the Vietnam War. Mm -hmm. I remember him coming back home, watching him come back home in his Cracker Jacks. And I was like, you know, that's kind of cool looking. And then a buddy of mine joined as well. So that was a little bit of the motivation, but you know, it was really, uh, I've always been attracted, first of all, to the military. I think it's a great organization. In my opinion, everybody should do a few years just to kind of yeah. at least get your start. Uh, but it was those homeward bound commercials. I don't know if you remember them, uh, but there was some pretty cool commercials. There was Don Lotch in the Sea of Japan, and then it had that, it's, what we would probably call cheesy music now, but it actually kind of drew me uh, towards there. And then honestly, I come from an area of the country uh, where you know you, you earn your way up in life. I started working at my dad's gas station. Mike, I think I was seven. So the work mm -hmm. was kind of in place, going out in the hay fields. I, I think a young man or woman, you really want to learn about things in life, go, go lift some hay and put it in the back of a pickup truck. No kidding yeah yep. I, mean, it, I can relate to that yes it humbles you uh, yeah so then uh you know after i did that i'd never even seen the ocean when i joined uh, the navy uh so i joined and i said you know what submarine force uh, seems like a great idea and uh, i was lucky enough to be able to serve on five of them as i went through my navy career but uh you know what i'd, I'd do it again tomorrow exactly mm. the same way i had a very positive experience and like I said, I think any young man or woman that really doesn't know what they want to do, they should at least look at some branch of the military. And we'll talk a little bit more about that, I'm sure. But yeah, really my motivation. Yeah, well, you, what's interesting is you, you, uh, you love to be under and I love to be on top uh, of the water. I mean, I wanted to see the world. Top Gun was my motivation for getting in. You know, that was a turning yeah. point for me. Um, but, you know, I, I want to... I want to talk about leading during difficult times because I think everybody today is, you know, 
Let's talk about VUCA for a second. For those not familiar with that term, you know, the volatility, the uncertainty, you know, the complexity, the ambiguity that everybody is experiencing. I think that's commonplace throughout America right now. A lot of people are struggling with this, leading through difficult times. And we talk about leading through difficult times. You have led certainly a number of people through many different times, some good, some bad, through the service. Yeah. Um, what separates somebody in your position? Because you achieved Master Chief Petty Officer of the Navy. That is no small feat, yeah. which required you to lead, right? So how, do, how did you gain that? Was it something you were born with, Rick? Was it something that you just said, nah, I got to step up and somebody's got to do it? Help people understand how to even get out of bed, let alone lead their teams right now. Yeah, you know, first of all, people motivate me. I will tell you that uh, it, they always have. I just think it's just great to be able to work alongside some of the, you know, the nation's best. But, uh, you know, I think with that said, uh, you know, I didn't do this alone. This wasn't a journey I had on my own. No, I wasn't born with it at all. Two, I was never the best sailor uh, as I was going up through the you know, but here's what I did. You did get from me. I worked hard. I'd always stay out of trouble. And, you know, you try to work with the people around you and being in the military, you kind of have to do that. Uh, but I think what you had talked about earlier, uh, there's two things, one hard work and discipline. I think as you grow up, it'll transition into your military career. You know, the Navy's a great organization. And I'll tell you straight up, anybody can succeed if you have the desire, one, uh, and, and, and to go ahead and push forward. You know, our shipmates, uh, when I said I worked alongside them, any success I would say that I had in the military, there was a couple of things. One, it was the sailors that I either worked alongside that worked for me or the leaders that were there above me. You know, all of them put in a lot of effort and which contributed to any success I had. The other one is my family. Uh, you know, I always had the home front. My wife was a sailor, too, at one point. She did four years, uh, just retired from NCIS. And, you know, we have a, a family of, of sailors. So it's kind of mm. for those that work for them. But I always look to those jobs, too. Any job that was out in front of me with a little bit of humility. I'm one of those guys that if you think you've got this and you go into those jobs with a little bit of a cocky attitude, you might get set back or you'll learn a valuable lesson uh, you know, as you, as you fell. Uh, the other thing too is, is people will fail. You know, I failed several times throughout my career, but you try not to make it happen over and over again, either. You just don't make a habit of it. Uh, but I looked at those jobs in front of me and every single one of them, you know, as I was coming up through the ranks, you know, the next big job for me was the chief of the boat of a submarine. And that's the Cobb, the senior enlisted person on that submarine. Yeah. And I looked at that and I said, you know, I can't do that. I, there's no way I could do that. Then you find yourself in that job and you just work as hard as you can during that period of time to make life better for those individuals that are supporting you. And if you do that, I think you'll succeed. I also have this thing uh, when you talk, you said earlier about getting out of bed, right? There's two times that you get to get out of the bed really uh, well, one in the morning, you'll look at yourself in the mirror. I have this mirror test. I've had it for years. Uh, people talk about it now, and I think it's even in some other books uh, where they have kind of the same thought process. But you look at yourself, and as a leader, you need to make sure that in the morning that you have set your personnel or your sailors, your, your, you know, your, the ones that are under you, on a path for success that day. And I think, you know, whether it's with a checklist, just don't waste their time, clearly mm. communicate with them, and then move on. So you go through your day. The other time is at night. That's when you look at yourself and you need to be really hard and evaluate yourself as a leader. Yeah, okay, I made some mistakes. I could do better this. And then you just take those lessons learned and move forward. And I think that's what the people uh, rely on you to, to be. You know, I was lucky, and I, I, you know, I don't want to dominate this, but I was lucky, too, in my time going up through all of those ranks. Like I said, I kind of looked at the job and go, wow, I can never do it. Then all of a sudden, I find myself in the Mass Chief Petty Officer or the MCPON job, and I had worked for two CNOs, Chief of Naval Operations, during that time, and they run the Navy, right? 
Yeah. As well as I do, officers run the Navy, but the enlisted make the Navy run, which yeah. is cool. Uh, but those two CNOs, they gave me, uh, you know, as much leeway as, as I wanted. They said, hey, Mick Pond, you know, you're not here to be in the Pentagon. So I traveled about 85% of my time. And I think if you want to lead, you really have to get away from your computers. You have to get away from social media, all those things, and get out and see what's going on within your area. And at the end of the day, truthfully, you only control a certain area. So stay focused yeah. on that. A lot of people get too involved with what I call the white noise out there. It's just different things coming at you, especially this day and age with all the you know, the media outlets you can go to. So, yeah, I wouldn't say it's rare air, uh, but I would say it was a job that humbled the heck out of me. And every time I walked into the Pentagon, uh, let me tell you, now I'm from Rising Fawn, Georgia, a small town in the Northwest corner. And every day that I step foot on the steps of that Pentagon or step foot on an aircraft carrier out in the middle of the ocean, the Middle East or somewhere deployed, I just was humbled. And I was yeah. by the men and the women were out that were out there working so darn hard for the nation. It's just a humbling experience, and I'm happy to be able to do that. Well, yeah, and, and, and what I love that there's so much wisdom in, in your words. I, and if I could, you know, take a half hour and unpack everything that you just said in that uh, statement, I would. But, you know, to really sum it up, I think there's a few things that I note that I think people can truly apply to their life is number one, you are going to end up in situations that you don't think you're mentally prepared for, but you're going to have oh, to deal with it anyway, right? And so yeah. when you face those jobs and said, yeah, I don't think I can do that, but guess what? You're in it. It's time to step up and perform. And I, I think that is something today that a lot of people struggle with to some degree is, wait a second, I, you know, we've never been here, so I don't know how to respond to this. Well, that's okay. A lot of us have never yeah. been here before too. And so just do your best, get up, do right, right? Yep. Lead, like you say, be sure that you're writing things down. Be sure that you're not wasting time. Be sure that you're spending time on the important things, not the white noise. Yep. Don't get sucked up and consumed by social media. There's so much in leadership. Um, and as a parent, I look at this, you know, what type of dad am I to my daughters, right? Yes. What, example am I being to them? Am I consumed and getting sucked in by people that I don't even know on social media because they want to give me heartache? Or am I saying, you know what, that doesn't really matter. What really matters is the time you invest with your friends, your family, invest there because that's where you're going to get the return. Um, I, I think it's, it, it's so powerful, um, you know, what's going on and, and, and your ability to lead. You've, you're a proven leader. And when we look at today, you know, um, I think many, you know, locally, certainly in the Seattle area, you know, we, we just lost a great police chief in the Seattle, you know, area. It's tragic, you know, what happened there. Um, you know, that's when we see, uh, and people know this, I, I try to stay apolitical, but, you know, when there is leadership failure, you just got to call it out. And, you know, in, in that case, I, I believe that there, you know, was, and, and we wish the chief best as she, chief best, the best as she moves yeah. on. But, you know, uh, not only is this region in turmoil, but certainly I think some would argue America's in turmoil. Um, how do, and we talk about this as a family, Rick, you know, we talk about our differences should lead to discussion, not division, yeah. right? Because that's where understanding happens. Um, for you, was there a defining moment in your career in America um, where you said, you know, this is how I need to work through differences. Yeah, yeah. You know, great comment. And I would tell you, you, you hit the nail on the head, uh, in my opinion, when you said more discussion, less division. And I think that's where we're at as a country right now. And, you know, there's many things that are going to affect it over the next few months, you know, leading up to November. It's just back and forth and we can't do anything about that. And I think that goes back to my piece, worry about what, you know, works for you and, and you stay focused on it. You know, there's many events that has happened over my lifetime. You, you've seen a few as well. Uh, but, you know, when you talk about defining moments, I could probably say a few things. I mean, I remember as a young kid, when we had three TV stations, 
you know, the civil rights movement, Vietnam on, on you know, on the screen. I remember when my brother had to go off to uh, MELPS to get screened to go to, you know, Vietnam, Kent State, uh, HIV, SARS, uh, mass shootings. I mean, there were just so many things that will define you uh, that you have to stay focused on. But I think the biggest for me and a good example of where we came together, and you mentioned that, was 9-11. Yeah. I remember exactly where I was when I when 9-11 happened. Um, you know, and, and everybody knows America was attacked. There was chaos. There was uncertainty. People were afraid. Uh, it sounds familiar, right? Yeah. yeah but, sure. uh, here's what I will say. I think America or and Americans rallied uh, together from both sides, right? Everybody came together. And uh, we took care of business. You know, we went out there and we engaged uh, who we had as the enemy. And I wouldn't say that we eradicated uh, terrorism, but I would say that, you know, we put things in place to hopefully mitigate it through our lives. So I think that's the example. And that's what frustrates me now when I see some of the, all the things that are kind of churning in our nation now. And there's a lot going on. But if you look back on the history, there always has been a lot going on. Yeah. We're a little more now, you know, uh, because we're out there and, the, you know, all these media outlets and all this social media. But I'd say you have to sift through that, find the best, you know, the best source of information and kind of register it. You need to make your own decision, um, you know, and it bums me out when I see a lot of folks, you know, they're, they're just attacking everything that comes out. But until we get together, uh, back to the opening part, I fear we're going to have, um, we're going to have, you know, this continual churn, at least in the near term. I think many of our political leaders have dug in, you know, and they're not going to yeah. move until this one moves, but that goes against everything that we are as Americans. We have to absolutely, uh, you know, get together, find some solutions that work for everybody. Because right now we got a lot of Americans suffering in many ways and yeah. to attack that, you know, which, which actually brings up uh, another um, thing, uh, a couple of them actually. One, you know, there's a lot of finger pointing going on. Yeah. I always, always use this saying, and I've heard it for many years as well. When you point a finger at somebody and, you know, or something, you've got three going back at you. Yeah. So evaluate what you're doing as well to make sure that, uh, you know, what you're doing helps things, you know, help, helps move them along. Um, so that, I think the strength of the military is the fact that, yeah, we may not agree always, uh, but at the end of the day, we will lock ourselves in a room, we'll slide a pizza under the door, and we really won't come out until we have, you know, a solution. It may not be a solution for everybody, but it's a solution that we can yeah. work and that's kind of where we need to get to now, um, in, in my opinion. Uh, but we need the leadership to get uh, united, cut out the BS bureaucracy, and uh, let's get it. Let's get some of these things fixed because there's a lot of things that we do need to attack. Well, I think it's the it's the whole philosophy of you know the one team one fight, right? I think yep. we've 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 kind of lost that that uh, that whole mantra, that whole vision of, hey, you know what, you know, we're talking about, you know, mission, vision, purpose, you know, we talk about it, you know, when we're transitioning, you know, in the military, brilliant, military's great, I'm going to assign you your mission, I'm going to assign you your purpose, and I'm going to give you identity. And then we get out, and that's erased. And then as a country, our leaders are supposed to step up and say, here's our BHAG, here's our big audacious goal, you know, that yep. we're going to accomplish, you know, we're, we're, I get it. You know, Kennedy was brilliant at it. You know, uh, geez, we have some issues with Russia. Uh, but hey, by the way, in 10 years, we're going to be landed on the moon. And all of a sudden, people are like, wow, this is amazing. We're going to go to the moon, right? Yeah. We don't have that right now. We need a moon moment, right? What yes. are we going to do as a country that unites us? Uh, and let's pray to God it's not another terrorist act that unites us or a virus that, you know, people want to debate and can't see so yeah we'll be united you know one of the things I think from all of this that we really have to be careful of is don't forget those that have really kind of taken care of us through all of this in the Navy as you know we had Navy corpsmen some yeah. of just the best people in the world and you know 
talk about mission and accomplishment. Hey, go do this. They go do it. They fix it. They find it. They do whatever they need to do. So now we have the first line uh, folks for this COVID thing. And one of the things I used to always tell the Navy corpsman is, hey, man, I really appreciate what you're doing, but don't forget about yourself. You know, you got to be mentally, physically, spiritually, and all of that, uh, you know, taking care of yourself because, you know, you are, you control your destiny. And if you're not taking care of yourself, then, uh, you know, everything else around you could fall apart as well. Yeah, that's so good. So let's talk about, you've got, you know, we're talking about leading in difficult times. We're giving people little nuggets here and there, um, you know, personally and professionally. And we've talked about VUCA and I know some people don't, aren't familiar with that term, but they'll become more familiar with that term. Um, but what would you say are like one or two practical steps, like serious, no kidding, practical steps that people can do that can pull themselves out of any funk they're in? Yeah, one, there's so much out there. You know, uh, a good example, I was up at Rainier this weekend. You know, you want a free moment, drive up there. Uh, uh, get up there, go see the wildflowers. It doesn't cost a darn thing, really, uh, you know, to get around the park. To get in the park, you might have to pay a little but there's so many hikes. I mean, we're in a great state. Yeah. But, but again, it goes back to that mirror thing and looking at each other and saying, Hey, what do I control? And I'm, you know, I'm doing pretty good overall. Uh, and you have to look too. there's always somebody out there that's, it's not doing as well. And you got to figure out, you know, how to bring them on or along. But uh, I think taking care of yourself has to be uh, a priority. And, you know, you can do that again, either through a hike, you can do that by getting outdoors, working out. I mean, I was up this morning at five, it's my mm -hmm. normal routine and that's what I do. Uh, but, you know, in, in, this, in this book we'll talk about in a second, there's, there's several principles that I learned throughout the, the years. And I'll be very brief, but I had my mom's and my dad's principles and it was little things like never be late, you know, never be late, work hard every day, nothing, nothing in life is free. Stay out of trouble, respect everyone, especially your elders. And you know, the other thing too is, I like to say this a lot, you know, at work and other places, you know, the cleaner, for example, that comes in and does the cleaning of an office, yeah. whatever, they're just as important yeah. as, uh, you know, your top line CEOs of the company because they make things work too. And I don't know how much time we have, but one of the coolest things I saw uh, when I was traveling around is McPon. I went out on a carrier. Honestly, it was probably, uh, I bet it was 120 degrees out there. It's so hot. Uh, but I went into a galley and that's where they, you know, they do a lot of the cooking and cleaning. And there was this young man in the scullery. Now he's washing dishes. The water's hot, steam's flying everywhere. I look in and go, Hey, shipmate, how are you doing? And he says, I, I said, what are you doing? He says, Hey, Mick Pond, how are you? He says, I'm launching aircraft. And I kind of stepped back a little bit. I'm going, okay. But in his mind, by him doing that task, he was actually contributing to the mission. But what was even mm. impressive was that command had taken and they instilled that sense into every single person on board that carrier. They knew the mission. So I guess my point to that is, is, you know, the way people communicate, you know, we talked a little bit about the white noise earlier. Quit worrying about all that stuff you can't handle, folks. You know, get out of bed and worry about you, what you work with or who you work with, and kind of keep it focused in that, that level. I get it. You have to worry about different things. But at the end of the day, you don't control them, probably. Yeah, let's talk about your book, The Breaching the Summit, because I, I think that's, and I, I'm going to encourage people to pick that book up. Uh, Appreciate it. Yeah, simply because, you know, as leaders, and I think the study that just recently came out is said the average American reads like 2.5 books, like finishes 2.5 books a year, which as an author, that's horrible. So, uh, you know, if people haven't read my book, you need to read that, the, the couple of them too. But I would say that any leader and anybody that's an emerging leader needs to consume information from other people that have gone before and you have gone before, no question. So tell us a little bit about the, your book, Breaching the Summit. Yeah, well, first of all, this is it. So I'll hold it up so everybody can see it. But the cool thing about this book is it's really not just my book. Uh, as you turn on the back here, there's six of us listed and we even put it in, in service order, but 
you know, the, you got the Sergeant Major of the Army, Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps, uh, myself, the Chiefs of the Air Force and National Guard, and the MCPOG of the Coast Guard. So there's six different views. It was a lot of fun to write this book, uh, first of all, but uh, more importantly, I think what I would say to individuals when you do pick this up, or if you do pick it up, I don't really call it necessarily just a book. I'd call it a leadership journal because mm -hmm. you look at it, the army guy was a tanker. So he drove tanks. So there's a view you're going to get that you probably didn't have. The Marine guy was a sniper. So that's a, you know, a different view. Submariner for me, Coast Guard, uh, Coast Guard, he was a boat driver. And then, you know, the Air Force and the National Guard. But I would expect people, if you're going to pick it up, take it, underline passages, highlight it, write things in it. Uh, and then one day when you you decide you're done doing what you need to do, pass it on to someone else and let them kind of do the same thing. I think, uh, you know, everybody needs a mentor. Yeah. And with this book, I think it's a, it's a good guide for you. It's not uh, the end all be all of leadership. It's just different views. And I think the average reader can absolutely uh, relate to uh, what's in there. Again, we had a lot of fun. It was just a, you know, my, I think each uh, section is about 40 pages, but uh, it was a good, it was a good 40 pages. Uh, so yeah, that, I love that. I think that's so great. And if people do have questions on the live show, feel free to, you know, type those in, write those in, et cetera. Um, I, you know, there's so many leadership books out there, Rick, uh, yeah. a ton, right? You know, people are like, ah, another leadership book. Uh, but I think what people need to understand, especially from somebody of your accomplishments, and I'm going to say your accomplishments because I, seriously, it's no small feat, uh, as you know, um, is there are lessons learned. And I think sometimes it's not even the big rock lessons, right? It's not like, hey, you know, this was the major sea that we navigated, the major storm. It's those little life's lessons that I think can be really powerful too. So what would you say is one little life lesson that, transformed and I'm going to say transformed your life it was little but you went wow you know what that had that had a transformational impact on my life yeah you know it's funny what what I've done and I do this every year I send this out to all the folks that are going to be chief petty officers there's actually a copy of this in the book uh, and it does list a few things through my career that I've kind of grabbed hold of as I was uh, pushing through you know, I, I think the biggest thing for me is, is about communications. I think a lot of times people fail when they don't get the right information or don't pass along the right information, and it's how you do it. Uh, but at the end of the day, I think, you know, you have to find someone that is a, a, a mentor and a leader. And I'd say that's the, uh, the biggest thing for me. I was lucky enough to have good individuals. You know, there was a my first senior chief up here, I was stationed in, in Bangor, Washington in 1981 on a submarine, but I'm still friends with that senior chief. He's mm. down in Florida now, but those are the little things. The final thing I would say, Mike, is look, we have this habit of saying taking care of people. And, and granted, there's a time and there's a place for that, right? But it's like your children. I think we're at a point now in, in the world, really, that you have to challenge people to be better. Mm, they good. don't necessarily want to be taken care of. They want to be challenged to be better. So if, you, if I would say there was one thing that uh, pulled me away and, and made me rethink some of the things um, is that, you know, there's a saying I used to carry around in my wallet. It was a clipping from a, a paper, and I heard the lady that I used to work for way back when at a KOA an ounce of example is worth a ton of advice. And I think, you know, just put your nose down, work hard. Things are going to start coming your way. And, uh, you know, access all the, uh, the opportunities that are out there that will allow you to do it. You know, if you can afford it, access the ones that maybe you need to pay a little for. But there's so many free things in life that you can go get and help you can get. So that's, that's really it, I think, in a nutshell. Uh, I, I hope it didn't let you down with that wow moment. No, not at all. Not at all. How can people get your book? Where can they find it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, you know, we, we just changed publishers, which was kind of cool, but you can get it on Amazon uh, print and for a Kindle. 
Casemate Publishers is another place. Uh, you get that print. Barnes and Noble has it, print and Nook. And then Google Play has it in ebook. But hey, don't you worry, Mike. I'll send you a copy. Oh, good. Oh, good. Good, good, good. Well, hey, and, and to our listeners uh, and our viewers, be sure that you pick up Breaching the Summit. You guys are going to want to pick that up. And for those of you who are learning to gain leadership insight, whether it's learning key negotiation secrets or how to discover and deploy your greatest gifts and family, work, life, you guys be sure to check out our CAV group, which I hate that name. I know some of you Army guys are loving that, but it's uh, competitive advantages for veterans. It drives me crazy, but my team loves it. But be sure you check that out because we do a lot of coaching and training in there. You might even be able to have the... Uh, the Master Chief in there at some point uh, doing a little coaching and training for us, which would be awesome. But there's also other great interviews uh, at vision2020today.com. You guys can check those out. For those of you that uh, joined us live, I'm glad you did. Be sure again to check out the Master Chief's book, Breaching the Summit. Master Chief, again, thank you for being on the show. It's my absolute pleasure, Mike. And, and again, what you've I told you earlier, but for everybody's benefit, what Operation Military Family Cares does. I mean, you're, you're on point. And if I can ever help you or assist, just, just reach out and give me a holler. Well, thank you, sir. I appreciate We're that. We're shipmates now. That's it. Yes, we are. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>